YouTube, YouTube, what's going on? She got Professor Smell good and we back, baby. All right, you guys, um, let's get into the journey to Professor Smell good, all right? Talking about 2013 and the wintertime going to 2014, okay? So, um, not actually not the winter, it was actually uh, the spring, okay? So, what happened in the spring was, I was, uh, what happened? Yeah. Was it in the spring? Yeah, no, it was, it was uh, in the summertime, in the summertime. Okay, so in the summertime, you know, I was staying at this place on Gallagher in Hamtramck, and so the landlord came to me. We've been there for a whole year. The landlord came to me. He said, listen, we got laid in the walls, and you guys got to go, okay? So uh, the city came there, and they already did an inspection. I was like, wow, y'all got laid in the walls? They said, yeah, all the way back into 1965. So they said, you know, we got to get this fixed, so... Um, you guys gotta find somewhere else to go. So, I was like, wow. Hey, how you doing, miss? Right. So I, I said to my wife, I said, baby, I said, wow. I said, they gave us a short notice, you know, we gotta find somewhere to go. So, um, so I was like, wow. I said, at this moment, I mean, we had the money for the security, security deposit, everything, so we're calling around, trying to find what places, um, had places available, couldn't find anything. Okay, so, I had told my wife at the time, I had told her, what's going on? I had told my wife at the time, I said, listen, baby, I said, listen, the only place I can think of right now is actually um, a motel, just temporary situations. So that's exactly what we did. So we ended up going there. So I had a car at the time. I had a little Altima. So what we did was I paid the, the week's uh, lease, and I was there. So what I would do is I would sell... Um, when I was there, I would sell my oils every Saturday at the, the Eastern Market, the bridge at the Eastern Market. A lot of your brothers, you know, used to be at the Eastern Market. You, you guys saw me there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So I was there every Saturday. So since I was there every Saturday, uh, what happened was I would sell oils at the fish market uh, six days a week. Only happened for like two weeks, okay? I mean, I mean, I had it two weeks, but I had to change up my schedule, how I did it. So I would be there selling my oils throughout the week, six days a week. I mean, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. All right? Um, Saturday, I would be at the bridge, Eastern Market, selling my oils, okay? So I said, I had a conversation with my wife. I said, baby, listen, I said, you know, I got to, you know, try to find a job, man. Hey, how you doing, miss? All right. So I said, I got to find a job, you know, until I can get to the point where, you know, um, you know, the business, my oil business, I mean, where, where, you know, I got a job where it's making enough where it can support and I can just sell oils on the side to bring in extra income. So I said, you know what? I don't want to just, I want to, I don't want I don't want a job. I want a career. So I went to Everest. So I went to Everest uh, for pharmacy tech. I enrolled there, they accepted me right away. I started that next week. So what I did was, so while I was there, so everybody there at Everest, they knew I sold oil. So I would go to school early in the morning. I had to get up 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 o'clock in the morning, drive my car there, drop the kids off at school, then go there. How you guys doing this morning? Hey, how you doing? All right, all right. All right. So what I did was, how's it going, son? All right, now. So what I did was I went there. Um, eight from eight to three. So when I got out at three o'clock, I would go straight to the fish market and sell my oils because I needed to make money to make the lease for the motel. Free samples of the oils. Got some nice. Got some new. Got some for you. What's good, fam? So um, that's what I did. Was you know what I mean? So I would um, leave at three o'clock. Some t some days one o'clock. You know, so I can make a little bit more money. And what I would do is I would be outside at the fish market over there, have my car parked right there, and I have my table in the trunk because I have my table in the trunk because um, I would be at the fish, I mean, at the, uh, Russell Bazaar, I mean, Eastern Market, setting up my oil, so I would use the same table. So I would have my table set up my oils outside of the fish market because I would catch all of the traffic outside. And then what I would do is I would burn my incense, but also I would study my pharmacy work while I was selling oils. While I would be stopping customers, hey, how you doing? So I got a free sample for you. I would have my book in my hand studying, revising my notes. How's it going now? Okay. All right, all right. Good to see you.
All right. So I would be revising my notes at the same time. So I'm studying, selling oils, making money all at the same time. That's what you call multitasking. Okay, so that's what I did. So one day, um, because I'm, I'm kind of like scrambling the stories. So one day, um, I was taking my stepdaughter to work. I mean, my stepdaughter to school and my stepson. And the car broke down. The car broke down because you know, I had my scrubs on. I was driving to the mosque to go pray. And then I would go and drop them off at the school, which was like two blocks away from the mosque. Drop her there and then go right to school. So on my way there, the car broke down like, 10, like 50 feet away from the mosque. So my stepdaughter had to get out the car with me. She had to help me push it in the parking lot of the mosque, right? And they would let me park it there until, you know, when I got out of school and find out what I was going to do. I was going, you right? All right. So that's what I did. So when I got out of school, you know, found out that the motor had locked up. So what I did, I eventually jumped that car. You guys have a good one. All right. So I eventually jumped that car. Got like $300 for it. So now I ain't got no transportation. So what I did was... I had a bike. Remember the bike I was telling you guys about? About where I would uh, take the bike and have the handlebars attached to the, I mean, the crate attached to the handlebars of the bike with logos on all three sides. I ride all around Detroit. I had the same bike in the motel. I would lock it up in the gate of the motel. And that was pretty much, you know, for worst come to worst situation, you know, worst case scenario. So I didn't have no transportation at the time. So what I did was I would ride my bike to school. I would ride it to school and when I would come from school, I would ride it all the way to what would in Manchester. That's like probably 12 miles. Ride it there, sell my oils there, right? Lock my bike up, uh, attached to a pole right by the fish market. And it was fall. It was about fall at the time. It was about the winter time. So it was cold. I had my gloves on and I did it. So um, that's what I did, man. You know, I had to grind it out, man. Was it easy? Absolutely no. It wasn't easy at all. So, eventually what happened was the, one of the owners, he said, listen, you know, you can't sell oils out here anymore. So I was like, all right. No, actually, no, a police officer came. He said, listen, you can't sell your oils out here. I said, you know, no, actually, no, no, I'm sorry. No, that was another time. The owner came out and he said, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, the one above me said, you can't sell oils here no more. I said, really? I said, all right. Thank you for letting me stay. So... I'm like, wow. I'm like, what am I going to do now? You know what I'm saying? What am I going to do now? So, <laughs> this is really rock bottom, man. This was really rock bottom for me at that point. So, I got on my bike. When I got on my bike, guess what happened? When I un un unlocked my bike, the tire was on flat. So, I had to ride a flat tire all the way to the motel, which was, which was on Mount Elliott and East Grand Boulevard. Called, it was called the Packard Motel, okay? Very, very dangerous area, area, very dangerous dangerous neighborhood, and it's very deserted. Okay, a lot of abandoned houses over there. What's good, family? All right? All right. So that area was, you know, really rough, man. And I was over there, you know. And so I couldn't take the kids to school. So now I can't drop the kids off at school now because I got to get to school. So guess what? This is before my son was born. So now, hey, how you doing? So now... My wife, she got to help us. So now my wife, she had to walk the kids. to the, We walked to the bus stop together. And I would be going this way, going to school, and she would be catching the bus that way, going to drop the kids off at school. So, and it was deserted, man. Dangerous, dangerous neighborhood. How you doing? You know, dangerous neighborhood over there. So, but Allah protected us the whole time. We was in that motel for nine months, man. So, now let me tell you when the winter time came. So, I would sell oils riding up. I would sell oils um, on the bus, you know, until I came into a dollar store and the guy, the brother was like, listen, you can sell your oils in here. I said, okay, cool, not a problem. So I would sell my oils in the dollar store. I had to stop, you know, because it was too drug infested or whatever, you know, too much activity going on. So I said, no, nah, I don't want to be caught up in that stuff. So what I did was, I was like, man, like, I don't know where to sell my oils at, but I'm still going to school at the same time. So... This was the winter time, okay? Real cold outside. Man. It was freezing outside. I mean, I think that was the worst winter ever. That was the worst winter ever. You know, I mean, it was so cold outside. It was so much snow. The snow came up to a little bit past, kind of close to my knee. 
I had to wear snow. Well, th that's later on after I found something. But before then, it was cold outside. Listen, man, I was budgeting so much, I had holes in my shoes. My basketball shoes, the only shoes that I had, okay? And I had holes in them. And I would have to walk. I would have to wear them same shoes to school, man. You know what I'm saying? It's cold outside. Now, sometimes I would have to use a plastic bag to tie it around my shoes so therefore the snow wouldn't get in the inside of my shoes from the bottom and, you know and get my feet frostbit frostbit frostbite excuse me so still there you know what I'm saying I'm in school you know what I'm saying selling my oils you know people in school I'm letting them know I got oils you know everybody excited about me you know they like man you know we love your oils they smell so good everybody making orders every that's one thing man every place that I went I made it known that I sold oils everywhere that I went Everywhere that I went, I made it known that I sold oils. Have a great day, miss. I made it known that I sold oils. I never kept it a secret that I sold oils. I never kept it a secret. Everybody knew that I sold oils. You see what I'm saying? I never kept it a secret. Always sold oils. Everywhere I went, I made it known, okay? Basketball coach, I made it known. When I was working janitorial in White, uh, White Academy, I made it known. Everybody knew I sold oils. So, story continues. So, now let me tell you a very, very... Uh, this, this part actually probably will make some of you guys cry. We was in a motel, and the Pacific room that we was in, it was, uh, it was, very, it was cold, man. It was cold. And so the other rooms, it, was, it wasn't any other rooms available. So other rooms, other rooms had nice heat, but the one that we was in, it didn't have heat. We had to use a space heater until there was another one available, and we had to get a network. So what we had to do, man... I remember, man, we had to sleep in the cold house. We had to sleep with our coats on, you know, thermals underneath, hood on, with the cover right here, and we had to sleep under one big blanket. Me, my wife, my stepson, and my stepdaughter. We used to have a space heater on, right? It was so cold in that Pacific motel that when we went to go use the bathroom, it was ice on the window from the inside, not the outside, from the inside. It was that cold. So... We would have to, this is what we did to keep warm. We had to be under the same blanket in the bed. How you feel, baby? All right, how are you? How, how, how many years old? Uh, these are seven hours. Seven so, no. Yeah. I didn't want to know. All right. So we'd be under the same blanket, and we would tuck the cover, cover um, the, uh, the blankets underneath our feet, all right, and over our whole body so we can circulate that body heat to keep ourselves warm, Okay. But when we took the covers off, it was freezing, man. And we had to make our prayers. Sometimes it was so cold that I couldn't walk to the mosque or ride the bike to the mosque because the tire was down. So I had to make my prayers on the ground. It was cold. And one thing that really just stood out to me, man, for my wife, she never gave up on me. She never, ever. This is the type of woman that, you know, you guys need in your life, man. Somebody that will be there with you when times is rough and when times is well, Okay. Everybody, every, anybody can be there when times is doing good, but who's going to be around when times is rough, when it gets rocky? And she was. My wife, she was. She was there with me. So, how you doing? So, you know, to continue with the story, man, um, I was there for nine months until eventually, um, eventually we had to, um, we came up with the money, right? Because the money that I was making was only enough for the lease. So eventually we came up with the money to actually, you know, we found a place out there in Hamtramck. Secure deposit, we had it. And it was nine months, it was a test, man. You know, it was, it was a test, you see what I'm saying? There's no testimony without a test. You know, you gotta go through a test first. And I'm telling you, like, you guys, see professor smell good. You know, um, I went through a lot to get to this point, man. It has never, ever been easy. Went through a lot to get to this point, man. Yeah. You know, so, oh, you know, that was rock bottom for me right there, man. That was rock bottom yeah. for me. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention as well. So how did I get into this grocery store here? How? I, I went to school over here because my school, is, my old school is right back over here. Not too far from here. So one day I was walking. I'm walking from there, selling my oils, and then I went to a fish market over here. Brother that I know, I didn't know he had the fish market. I asked him, can I sell oils there? He said, yeah. Sold there for like a month. I was at the bus stop in Hantramic one day. Ran into Ivy, the lady I was telling you about. Ivy, she asked me, you know, try to get into the grocery store. I said, I don't think so. And I tried it, and they let me do it. And I've been here ever since. It's been almost four or five years now. So it's been a testimony, man. Like, everything, the way everything happened in, you know, such order, it, it really just amazes me. It just let, let me know that, you know, 
the Creator has a plan for you. All you got to do is just be patient and just fall right in line, and everything will fall right in place for you. Have a great day, Ness. All right. All right. So that, that's pretty much it, man. This is your guy, Professor Smell Good. Appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the love. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you.